Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild the top hand on a steel MS-260 chainsaw. What I mean by top hand is the cylinder, piston and rings. And here's the chainsaw that I'll be doing this job on today. And for this I'll be using a Force Tech cylinder kit from DiscountOnlineParts.com. One way you can know if your top hand is burned out is that you will have no compression when you pull the cord. Always make sure though that the decompression valve is pulled up. Now one way you can actually confirm that the top end is burned is by removing the muffler and looking through the exhaust port. Now to do that you need to remove both torque screws over here and they are a T27. Now you can use a hand torque screwdriver to do that. However today I'm going to be using my Milwaukee quarter inch drive impact tool. And I've got the T27 Torx screw bit at the end. Quick tip is during the job, just put all the nuts and bolts and the parts in a container. And this is what I mean by checking for scored piston. You can see it's all scratched up. So obviously this saw will have no compression whatsoever. You can also see both rings are damaged. So in this case, this is a sure confirmation that it is burned out. Also, you want to make sure you know why this happened in the first place, because you don't want to put in a new top end and end up with the same problem again. In this case, however, I do know that they ran in without any oil in the fuel, so that's why it's burned out. In some other instances, you may have a carburetor that's set too lean, or you may have leaking at crank seals, and that can cause your saw to burn out as well, because it's gonna suck in way too much air. Now to start off, I'm gonna remove the bar and the chain. It's gonna make it a lot easier to handle the saw. Now I'm also going to remove this screw here to get the top cover off. I'm also going to remove the air filter cover. Also during this assembly I like to put all the dirty parts in a box and all the engine parts in another cleaner container. Now you also have to remove the air filter by removing both screws over here. They're going to stain the air filter however you're just going to loosen them to get the filter off. I'm also going to remove both torque screws here that hold the rest of the muffler on. And now this section of the muffler will come off. And you're going to find a few metal gaskets behind it, so grab a hold of them as well. Now I'm going to remove both 8mm nuts that hold the carburetor on. It's always easier to remove the carburetor if you remove the throttle linkage first. To remove the throttle linkage, what I do is I remove the black cover here. And to do that, I'm going to use a T20 Torx screwdriver and remove the small Torx screw underneath. Once the screw's off, just pop the cover. Be careful because you don't want this to fall apart. And here's the throttle linkage. Usually it's in the hole over here. But once you remove the cover, it will pop out. Now what I do during this procedure is I put the cover right back on and I'll secure it with the screw. Then there'll be no guessing as to where the parts go when it's time to put it back together. Now I'm going to remove the carburetor by pushing it out like this. First I'm going to air blow all the sawdust away from the carburetor. I've got the carb pulled out a bit but first I'm going to remove the fuel line from the carb here. Also another tip is it's good to drain the fuel from the tank before you even start this procedure. And now the carb should come out a lot easier. And I'm just going to show you where the linkage goes on the carb. This is how it goes on the carb, so now you can remove the throttle linkage. And usually the impulse line that you see here does not come out with the carb. It's usually down in here connected to the cylinder. Now I'm going to remove this part here. Also this metal part here will come out. I'm also going to remove the spark plug as well. I'm going to reach down with my T27 bit and take off the four screws that hold the cylinder on the crankcase. And you can see the screw right down here. Now before lifting the cylinder you can go and loosen this screw here. It's a clamp that holds the intake boot on the cylinder. I'm just going to turn it out a bit. I'm not going to take it right out. 
And now when you pull the cylinder, it's going to pop right out of the boot. Now I'm just going to show you the damage before I continue. You can see it's badly damaged. Here's the side I showed you through the exhaust port earlier, and that's excessively scored. And if you look inside the cylinder, it's the same thing. Very badly damaged. So if your saw has no compression, this could be the problem, obviously. Now what I'm going to do is remove the decompression valve. Now you can use a 13 millimeter or half inch socket or your chainsaw tool. I'm taking it off because I'll be putting it onto the new cylinder. And the last thing I'll be removing from the old cylinder is the small rubber buffer here. And I've got a brand new base gasket so I do not need the old one here. Although you could reuse it if you had to. Now you want to grab a good pair of needle nose pliers and remove the circlip that holds the piston pin. Now this can be a bit tricky if you're not used to it. This is what you have to watch for, that the pin doesn't fly away and you can't find it. Fortunately it's landed on the side over here. Now I'm going to use this small block of wood. It's part number 1108-893-4800 from steel. It's very inexpensive. Now you could make one yourself if you wanted to. Now I'm going to use this tool by putting it over here. And now with a roll pin punch, I'm going to punch the pin right out. And always remember to punch the pin out on the side that you took the circlip out of. And there's also a needle cage bearing in there that needs to be removed. Now at this point here I'm going to remove the recoil assembly as well because I want it clean behind the flywheel and all inside over here. There's four Torx T27 screws that hold this on. Now to clean this on, I'm going to use my air compressor and also my parts washer. You can also use old fuel to do this, but be extra cautious. And you don't want to get dirt inside the crankcase. If you do, make sure that it is removed before you reassemble the saw together. And before you air blow the saw, it's best to put a rag or a cloth here where the crankcase is to prevent extra dirt from getting in there. And before using compressed air to clean any parts, make sure you have safety glasses on. So now I've got it really clean, the stuff in the parts washer does a really good job. So with that in the air compressor it's cleaned out of any dirt. I also made extremely sure that there was no dirt inside the crankcase over here. Now what I do in a rebuild like this is I replace the needle cage bearing that goes on the piston pin. The reason I do that is if it's slightly worn out because of running with no oil, you could end up damaging your new cylinder kit. And the part number for the new piston pin bearing is 9512-003-2250. And here's a close-up look of that new bearing. Now I'm going to put a bit of oil on that bearing. It doesn't matter what kind of oil you use. And I'm going to insert it into the connecting rod. And I'm going to take parts from my kit and start putting them back in. First I have to start with putting the piston rings on the piston. And to do that make sure you put oil all over your piston where the rings go in. You can be liberal with the oil, it will burn off once you start the machine up. Now when you grab your piston rings you want to make sure that the notches over here are facing down. They're notched like this so they go underneath the pin. And with the oil, it's going to make it a lot easier to get the rings on, so just stretch them. You don't want to go too far because they are brittle. The rings could break if you stretch them too much. So bring it into the first groove, then go on to the next. And as you can see, this is how the rings would fit in perfectly with the notches and the pin. And now I'm going to reinstall the second ring.
just going to bring it to where the pin is. And that was nice and easy to do. The extra oil definitely helps. Now there are two piston pin circlips that came with the kit. Now what I'm going to do is install a pin on the right side of where the arrow is. The arrow will actually point toward the exhaust port. So grab a good pair of pliers. And what you want to do is get the circlip inside the groove over here. Now it can be very aggravating putting in these clips, so take your time. I find it harder with the ones that don't have an actual band inside where you can grab on properly. As you can see it's partly in now. Keep your fingers in case it flies off. Now it's starting to go in there. But I'm going to hang on to it in case it pops out. And there it's in. You want to make sure that once it's in the groove, that it's nice and tight. You don't want it to be loose because sometimes when you put the clip in it gets bent and it loses its strength to keep it in place. Now the arrow on the piston should be facing the exhaust port so I'll just place it over here for now. Now there's also a new piston pin that came with the kit. Now I'm going to put some oil on the piston pin. Now what you need to do is line up the piston with the connecting rod. My piston pin clip is on that side so I'm going to put in the pin from over here. Now with a roll pin punch, I'm just going to make sure that the pin is pushed in all the way. And what you want is enough room here for the circlip to go in. And I'm going to install the other circlip. Now at this point I'm going to reinstall the impulse line that came off. Before reinstalling it, you want to check it for cracks. Another thing you can do is pressure test it. Got it connected here. I'm going to block off the hole, pump it up. And once you hold it, there should not be any decrease in pressure at all. So this line's good. Now I'm going to run the line through the hole over here. And it actually has a grommet over here that's going to snap right into the plastic. And what you need to do is connect the impulse line to this connector here on the crankcase. And you want to make sure it's pushed in as far as you can get it in there. And make sure that it's very tight on the connector. So this is good. And I'm just going to pop in the grommet that's fitted on this hose. I'm just going to use something dull to get it in there. And this is how you want the impulse line to be installed. Nice and firm. And you also want it to be nice and firm on the connector over here. Now I've got an OEM base gasket and it's part number 11180292306. Now I'm going to use some Durco gasket sealant. I'm going to put a bit on the gasket and on the crankcase base. I'm just going to start by putting a thin film down here. And as you can see I apply just a thin film. You don't want to put too much in there because it could go in and block up your impulse line. And I've also put some on one side of the gasket. By the way guys, it's not totally necessary to do this, but I always do it as a second precaution to prevent leaks. I only put the Durco on one side of the gasket. This side with no Durco is going to go on the base. And now I've lined up all the holes and also the gasket maker is going to help to hold the gasket in place. Now I'm going to put some oil on my piston and rings and rub it all around where the rings are. This will make it easier to get it into the cylinder. Now at this point here you're going to have to make sure you line up the piston rings to where the pins are. On this piston there's one pin here and one over there. And now I'm going to proceed to install the cylinder. What I like to use is this little spring decompressor to squeeze the rings and then the cylinder goes in nice and easy. I'll put a link under today's video to where you can buy this small kit online. It's a very handy tool to have and it's very inexpensive. Now when you install the cylinder you want to make sure the exhaust port is facing toward the front of the chainsaw. And now with the piston rings aligned properly where the pins are, I'm just going to put the decompressor over the rings. You may have to realign the rings when you do this. And I'm just going to hold on to them. And I'm going to slide the cylinder gently over the piston. You're going to have to let go a bit of the decompressor so the cylinder can go down. 
even though you're using the tool be careful always double check that your rings are aligned properly in the piston pins now I've got it deep enough I can take the little decompressor out and I'm gonna go gently and bring it down and now what you need to do too is line up the intake boot on the intake part of the cylinder and I'll try to do this before I get the cylinder screwed down it might be easier you just want it to pop in there you can also reach in with your small finger if it fits and try to pry it onto the intake part of the cylinder now I'm gonna start putting in the cylinder bolts I've already put in a few and you have to go down here to put them in I'm gonna manually be hand tightening them I will not be using the impact to do this so for now I'm just gonna snug them now to get the one in the corner on I'm just gonna put it on my torque screwdriver and reach in underneath and now reach in from the top and just snug it up and you want to snug them up diagonally so I did this one I'm doing this one and I'm gonna do this one over here and now I'm just gonna go around and tighten them all up I don't have the torque specs but they do have to be fairly tight and you want to do them in increments like I'm doing here And that's good now at this point I'm going to reinstall the small buffer and it goes right here on the head what I've done here is just clean the decompression valve a bit and it goes in this hole here toward the front of the saw and for this I'll use my chainsaw tool or you can use a half inch socket and you want to make sure it's on tight Now I'm going to install the rubber cover that goes on top. Notice the notch over here on the rubber cover. It lines up to the notch over here. So just put it on like this. And that's all there is to it. Now at this point I'm going to tighten up the clamp down here that holds the intake boot to the cylinder. You'll have to reach down with a good slotted screwdriver and just turn that screw. And now you want to examine where the boot is installed and you want to make sure it's pushed in as far as it can go on the intake part of the cylinder. It's very crucial that you have the intake boot installed properly. And as you see it inside here, this is how you want it to be installed. It's got to be fitted on that intake part of the cylinder all the way around. Now at this point I'm going to install an NGK BPMR 7A spark plug. And now I'm going to reinstall the recoil assembly. The screw with the collar goes right here to hold the brake handle. And there's three other screws left. Now you want to make sure you tighten up the screws evenly. So again I tighten up the recoil in a diagonal pattern. Now I'm just going to turn the engine over just to make sure it feels right. And that's good. Now I'm going to reinstall the muffler. First I'm going to line up these two gaskets. The thicker one with the notches faces the cylinder and then the smaller one goes right on top like this and then the muffler. So I've lined everything up on the muffler and I'm holding the torque screws from the inside. And then you want to line it up with the stud holes on the cylinder. And it's crucial you make sure the gaskets are still on the bolts before you completely tighten it up. Now you want to put the second part of the muffler on, just basically insert it over here. And I like to put a bit of blue Loctite on the remaining two bolts of the muffler. And they go at the bottom over here. There is a lot of vibration and they do tend to come off sometimes. And the other one goes right at the bottom over here. And you're going to want these fairly tight. Now I'm going to insert the small metal part that goes in the intake boot over here. 
and now this collar goes right over. Now it's time to reinstall the carburetor. Before I do that, I'm going to remove the cover on the handle here first. Now I'm going to remove this screw here. Always hold the top cover with your hand. Now I'm going to release the cover and remove it. You just want to be extra cautious here so these parts do not come out of place. Now you want to grab your throttle linkage and the carburetor. Insert it here just like this. And this is the position it's going to go into the saw. The reason I take off the black cover here is because it's much easier to remove and reinstall the throttle linkage. Now you just want to slide the whole carburetor in there. This connector here will connect to the impulse line down here. You may have to remove the fuel line out of the way and then just go ahead and slide your carb in there. And you want to push it in as far as it can go. Now preferably with your fingers reconnect the fuel line. If you can't do it with your fingers you can use a pair of needle nose pliers but always make sure you do not damage the fuel line while doing that. Now for the throttle linkage just simply reconnect it inside the hole here. Now you want to get this tab here on the black cover right inside here on the white part of the saw. Now when I'm actually going to reinstall the black cover I'm going to hold the throttle linkage over here just so that there's room to get the black cover in. If I don't hold it over here I find that it disconnects itself from inside here. Now I'm going to flip the saw up by holding the cover and I'm going to reinstall that screw as quick as I can. Now you want to test your throttle trigger and if you see everything moving like this, you've installed it correctly. Now I'm going to install the two 8mm nuts. And now make sure you tighten up the nuts evenly. Now I'm going to reinstall the top cover. And I'll tighten up the top screw. Now I'm going to reinstall the air filter. And I'm going to install the bar and chain and soon I'll be able to try it out. It's always the exciting part of a rebuild is to actually put fuel in it and start it up and see what happens. Now I'm going to wrap my chain around the bar. As you can see this bar is pretty well worn out. If the saw runs good though I'm going to reinstall a brand new bar on it. First of all I'm just going to test it out with this old bar and chain. So here you just want to make sure it's on the rim and properly in the pin over here. Now just put your cover back on. And now the final part will be the air filter cover. Now a lot of people ask me what should I run the fuel at for the first tank or two? Well I highly recommend that you run it at at least 40 to 1. That's a lot more oil than usual. And for my very first tank I'm going to actually add a bit more oil to my fuel. This will make it a little richer than 40 to 1, maybe 35 to 1, but for the first tank that's good. But I'm anxious to start this up and see how well this new cylinder kit works. So the saw seems like it's going to be okay in the beginning there was bogging down but after running for a bit it started to run better and I also adjusted the carburetor slightly and I think that the four stack cylinder kits from discount online parts will do the job. 
Now a lot of people are wondering, how do I break in a saw with a brand new piston and cylinder properly? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use it for a full day's work right off the bat. I'm just going to cut logs here and there in little bursts. Then I'll let it idle and then give it a few bursts again. I'm going to do this for approximately a few tanks of gas. Again, I will add extra oil in each gas tank. I've added some in the first fuel tank as you saw and I'll add some again in the second one. Then after two or three tanks, she'll be good for a full day's work. And also you may notice as you use your saw more and it starts to break in properly, you're going to feel a bit more compression when you pull it over. That's normal. So again, it's a cheaper way to rebuild a saw as opposed to buying OEM parts. If I were to buy OEM parts here in Canada for this saw, it would not be worth it. It would cost me well over $300 and for that price I would just go out and buy a brand new saw. And there's also a link under the video today to where you can buy the cylinder kit for the MS260 chainsaw that I used today in this video. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to subscribe and you can see me in my next video. Have a great day.